So Jake, what are we going to do at work today? I'm Nick. Anyways, Jake, so there's a lot of new books out today. we got to get them on the shelf. It's a big day here at Atlas. But I'm Nick. So Jake, what did you watch for TV last night? I saw Heroes. It's from 2009. Remember 2009, Jake? I'm Nick. I feel like you're trying to tell me something, but I can't figure it out. Jake, you're my best friend. I spend every day with you. What are you trying to say? I'm not Jake. I'm Nick. Hmm. I need to do some investigation. I'm gonna have to think about this. Right, Jake? Welcome to Atlas Weekly. Hi, Puddins. We're at Virginia Comic Con. Harley here. And your fabulous Joker. And you're watching Atlas Comics. Well, it looks like I'm in charge, and that means we're gonna talk about Star Wars books all day. Nothing but Star Wars. Actually, there's a couple other books, but I'm gonna start with Star Wars. My mother always said, when God closes a Leia, she opens a Lando. Mom's a little crazy, but what that means is, with the Leia miniseries over, they're starting a new miniseries, Lando, number one this week. It's from Charles Soule and Alex Maleev. The art's awesome. There's a really cool villain in it. I won't spoil it. It's good, check it out. There's been a lot of talk about race relations recently, and the only way I can handle that is by reading a comic book. This is a gorgeous new book called Strange Fruit by J.G. Jones and Mark Wade. It looks awesome, but it deals with some gritty stuff. There's people wearing bed sheets over their heads and they're not ghosts. Just keep rolling? Yep. Image Comics puts out a lot of cool books, and you don't want to miss them, so you might want to check out the Image Previews, number one. It features names like Brian K. Vaughn, Greg Rucka, Kelly Sue Dayconic, Jason Aaron, just to name a few, or just to name the first four on the cover page. They have all new books coming out. Did I say Jeff Lemire? Yep, him too. They have all new books coming out, and this is your preview, image preview. The best, arguably the best Marvel event of all time was Civil War. And now, with Secret Wars going on, of course there's a new one. It's still got Captain America and Iron Man going at it, but now they've got a whole other group of heroes involved, like Gamora. And now for the new indie darling, Archie. Yes, that's right, Archie. But it's got Mark Wade and Fiona Staple, so people are gonna love it. I've got a ton of different covers. If you've ever read, if you never read Archie before, you might wanna try it. I know what you're saying. Hank, I love Marvel books, but couldn't they set them all in the Old West? Yes, 1872. It's got all your favorite Marvel characters, but in Old West ghost town. Well, it's not ghost town, but in the Old West. And they're gonna shoot it out at the OK Corral, 1602 style. 1872, what did I say? 16, well, in 1672, they were getting ready. That's when they prepped for 1872. <laughs> now for a couple quick reveals. Reviews, reveals, reviews. The Tomorrows is another psychedelic out there sci-fi book. It's got a new number one from Dark Horse. Check that one out. And Negative Space has really cool art. It deals with the parano paranormal, par Paranorman, if you love that movie. No, the paranormal, uh, it's got really awesome art, and it's got some aliens being dissected, if that's your thing. And I've got Spider-Man. I've got two Spider-Man, actually. First, I've got Spider-Island, number one. Also, if you missed it, my favorite Spider-Man book from last month is Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, and the second issue is finally out. Definitely doesn't have Venom in it, because something happened to him. Oh, wait. Star Trek Green Lantern claims to be the crossover event of 2015, and I call shenanigans, except wait, I can't think of anything bigger. That is pretty freaking big franchises. It's got Green Lantern, Hal Jordan style, and the cast of Star Trek, the new movie style, and they are crossing over. I've got two Mad Max options for you this week. If you didn't get a chance to check out the one shot featuring Nux and Immortem Joe. I have Mad Max Fury Road, number one, second printing. I've also got Mad Max Fury Road, part one of two. Check that one out. 
If you just can't get enough Justice League, JLA number one launched last, or two weeks ago. <laughs> if you just can't get enough Justice League, I've got JLA number two. I've also got tons of number ones featuring lots of cool covers with all your favorite characters on. Back in the 90s, cartoons were cool, and there was Invader Zim, and he's back in comic form. What is he, 2000s? 2001? Totally. Whatever. So it ran 2001 to 2002, but then half the issues, or half the episodes didn't air until 2006. That's so right. After they, they hired him not being aware that Johnny the Homicidal Maniac existed, uh -huh. and when they found that out, they wanted to distance themselves as much, much as possible. <laughs> Get in your way back machine and travel back to the glorious age of Image Comics. It's Bloodstrike, the first issue from Rob Liefeld. It's got all your Rob Liefeld favorites. Giant heads, giant muscles, women with giant eyes or something, I don't know. And now back to the good old days of X-Men. Age of Apocalypse. You know, when, Wolver when Wolverine only had one hand and Apocalypse ruled the world. It's all the wacky alternate version of the characters you love in Apocalypse World. Back again. The big book, I do mean big book this week, is East of West, The Apocalypse, Year One. You're thinking, Year One? There must be like 12 issues in there. No, there's 15. It's the first 15 issues in a hardcover with lots of cool extras. It's one of the biggest image books there is. Actually, can I do that one again? The biggest image book there is is Saga. But the second biggest book is East of West, and they're out with a giant hardcover this week. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah? They're not bigger than Walking Dead. Oh, them. That's a whole separate stratosphere. <laughs> All right, scrap it. I've got two Star Wars graphic novels. But they're not really graphic novels. They're Star Wars books. I've got William Shakespeare's The Clone Army Attacketh. This is a continuation of the Shakespeare series. And Star Wars Jedi Academy, Star Wars Jedi Academy, The Phantom Bully. This is like a cool little kid's book with cartoony things. It's like a... Uh, Wait, what's that kid series everyone loves? Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Logan, you know Diary of a Wimpy Kid? No. Doesn't matter. Kids love it. <laughs> Reading books and looking at the gorgeous art is one thing, but are they worth any money? Well, you can find out in the Overstreet Comic Book Guide. It's got all your prices, 2015 to 2016 edition. You can find out how much your comics are worth. Justice League Volume 6 is out this week in hardcover. It's called Injustice League. It's the story that takes place directly after... What was that crossover event I like? Hold on. Uh, United? No. Uh, Forever what? Evil? Forever Evil. It takes place after Forever Evil. And it features all your favorite Justice League characters, you know, Superman, Batman, Lex Luthor on the Justice League. And all those kids were kung fu fighting because they liked Iron Fist. Those moves were fast as lightning because it's written by Chris Claremont and drawn by John Byrne. It's the Iron Fist epic collection. It's got all the kung fu action you can handle. And in toy news, kids, I've got Gardens of the Galaxy orbs. Rocket Raccoon. Orbs are kind of like pops, but smaller and slightly cuter. Check it. It's got raccoon tail. Thanks for watching. Tune in. Oh, wait. Thanks for watching. Check out all these wacky social media things. And tune in next week when the show will be hosted by a real live human and not an upright talking grizzly bear. All right. Talk me through the intro outro. <laughs> Just push me forward. Well, I was hoping you'd say I'm Nick again. Oh, I should have said that. Uh... That's not you bad. Told me